No. Oh. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another hobby cheating video. Sorry, you caught me right in the middle of uh, polishing one of my uh, best painted awards here. Uh, no, no issue at all. Uh, recently, Mr. John Ninas, who painted 10 clan rats and now thinks he can paint an army, uh, decided to put out a little bit of a challenge to me, since we're both working on Skaven. And he thinks he's painting a better army than I am, which is crazy. The man speed paints two armies and all of a sudden he thinks that he's on the level. Mm. Well, it's going to take a little more than that, buddy. I've painted 20 armies and I've got a whole stack of these swords to prove it. But today, we're going to talk about the next unit in my building Skaven army, and that's Ratogers, or Rat Ogres, I guess you might call them. One of my favorite miniatures, going back all the way to the 90s. I've always loved Rat Ogres. I just thought they were the coolest concepts. It's like an ogre, and huge, but a rat. What's not to love? So, let's head over to the desk and uh, see what we can get into. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique in learned Vinci V style. All right, so with these rat ogres, the key to them is, you know, obviously they're bigger, but there's a lot more materials on them than the clan rat we painted previously. So we're going to have to break it down, take it slow, and make sure that we get something that's nice. As usual, we're going to start with the skin. Now, with the skin, I'm using the same exact color progression I used on the clan rats. And once again, the key here is going to be to start by laying down that nice, smooth, all-over base coat. But a difference here is I'm going to use a little bit of the airbrush. Now this is just to get that initial tone down. I'm working here with my Harder and Steenbeck Infinity. And uh, the goal is to just make sure that it's uh, I get a nice, even coat all over, heating those shadows a little bit. So I'm still working from a, a little bit of a volume over the whole surface. This just speeds up the base coating on these really large miniatures. No matter uh, how you're comfortable working with your airbrush, this is a pretty simple way. And if you're looking to experiment and learn, doing like base skin tones like this is really the best answer. So once I've laid down that base coat, we're then gonna work up to the brush. And I start slowly incorporating both the lighter pink, but also importantly, that green gray. And that's really the secret, the, the super secret sauce to this Skaven skin tone. Now you might wonder, why are you mixing green with pink? Well, they act as complementary colors, balancing each other out and creating a sort of neutral tone with a little bit of brown infusion in the middle. So as I continue to build up and build up the highlights, I get something that transitions really naturally from that very low red tone where we started up into this high pale skin tone that's very neutral. Doesn't really have the pink, doesn't really have the green, but yet fits perfectly. Now, I end that with just a little bit, just a little tiny bit of some of that pure green gray, but when I do that, I'm working very thin. And in fact, I'm doing that as I continue to build the skin tone up, period. As you're layering up skin tones and you incorporate more and more of a lighter color, you want to start working thinner and thinner. This is a pitfall I think a lot of people fall into. They work with one layer consistency the entire time. But as your paint changes, so too does the thinness of your paint need to change as well to avoid things like hard layer lines. With the uh, brighter, more white infused colors like that green gray, the opacity is gonna be higher, the chance for layer lines is gonna be higher, so we work thinner and build it up to keep everything nice and smooth. A few glazes at the end of the red tones to bring everything back together and down, and we're nice and smooth. Once that's in place, I want to go ahead and lay down some of the brown fur. And this is really important. I want that nice, deep, dark tone, just like with the clan rat, to contrast against it. This guy's a little different because it's sort of torn, as though he kind of ripped out of it. I assume the way they model this, it's like these things grow so rapidly, they actually kind of tear their fur, almost like the Hulk tearing a shirt. I don't know. That's what the modeling seems to imply to me. Either way, I want a high contrast here. Because the skin is so bright and pale, which is what I want, the fur needs to have a base that is really dark and will really help to accentuate the brightness of that skin. So I lay down the dark brown and then again slowly integrate a few lighter, warmer tones to then do lots of little individual hashing. And I'll be honest, this step takes a while. But I am trying to have like an award-winning army. Jokes at the beginning aside on John, both of us are trying to sort of really bring our own personalities and tastes and interest and, and passion to this force we're really excited about. So 
it means I just sit down and get a sharp brush and thin down the paint and just start doing a lot of sharp thin lines over the entire surface. And eventually I get to fur. An important thing to note here, the rules with layering the fur through hashes is exactly like layering the fur through layers. And that is to say there is a highlight area and a shadow area. This is another place I see people go wrong. They create, once they start doing the hashing, they lose their brains and just start hashing up to the highest highlight on every piece of fur all over the thing. Incorrect. We still have light and shadow. So that means on the top of his back where it's very exposed to the light, I'm going to come all the way up. But on his chest where it's tucked under and very dark, I'm not going to do every step of the fur. And so there's still a progression. It's just instead of progressing with one layer line, I'm progressing through a bunch of individual hashes. But it's the same principle. You put the highlight colors where the highlights are. You don't go as bright where it's not as bright, where there are shadows. Easy. Okay. With that being done, it's now time to jump on over to the armor. And this is really exciting. I wanted to have the red still very influenced, but of course these guys don't have uh, like clothes on the top of them like the clan rats do. So we're going to turn the main armor pieces red. I start by just laying down a simple base red tone. Then I work in uh, some of my intense red. That's the Adam Paints red. I really like this red a lot. And but of course then it's time to ruin it. Now here we have to heed the shape because this has this sort of triangular shape. We're going to use that to create some light against shadow. So I take my uh, that pale uh, green gray flesh tone and uh, I'm going to go ahead or sorry my pale white tone. I apologize that's just pure white and I'm going to lay that down over the area. Again it looks like completely silly when I do this. It looks like I ruin it but once I lay down that white, I can then take the fluorescent orange and apply two coats of that fluorescent orange over the whole area. Not just the white, but I extend off of it, just like a layer. I'm just doing it in reverse. So I cover all of the white plus more into the normal red so that that whole area has some of that fluorescent red underneath it. And that's really important. Once that's there, you want to make sure that it's spread over more than the white. It, you'll notice how heavily it tints the white and doesn't do a lot in the red, but it's important to bring it all together so some of that fluorescent tone shines up through all the red. Once that's done, it's then time to go back to additional fluorescent red glazes, and I just hit it with some mixes of red glazes and then a little bit of thin red plus some of that orange to pop it back up. I then do some edge highlights over the whole surface. Uh, again, same exact strategy. Go in with a light white infused color, take the orange over top, take the red glaze over the top. It means you have to do each edge highlight like three or four times, but again, it's worth it. Uh, and we're good to go with the armor. And I really think this came out looking cool. Now, once that's done, it's time for his little white cloth. Again, same progression. This one's actually pretty simple because we're going from sort of a mid-tone white up to a bright white. So there's really not too much to say here. I apply the base tone. I do shade this a little bit with some red gray from Pro Acryl just to create those nice shadows. Those are just glazed in. We don't want the full strong red gray. And then I just build up to basically the pure or to the near warm white color. This is just heavy warm white. And then a few glazes back and forth to bring it all together. And we've got this nice uh, intense white. Now, I'm going to be honest with what happened here. I was painting this Retoger, and I was recording, and I got to this point, and then I switched paints or whatever and started doing something new and working on something, and I just zoned out. Like, I just forgot that I was recording a tutorial and just kept painting him because I was having such a fun time. And suddenly it was three and a half hours later, and the model was basically finished, and I realized I hadn't recorded anything else. Oops, but don't worry. I painted a second one. So, second rat ogre. Here we go. Let's talk about the details from here because he has the same sort of stuff. So, other details we want to make sure that we get uh, as we're filling this out. Uh, first off, we've got to hit things like these little tubes. So, once again, because I'm going to be using, uh, in this case, the Pro Acryl uh, Bright Green and Bright Yellow from the Rogue Hobby set, uh, I want to lay down a nice white first so those colors come through true and intense. So again, I just lay down a nice uh, buff color. Once that's there and dried, I go over it with the green and then basically build up with the yellow toward the middle. 
Now to shade the very edges, I mix a little bit of my red into my green to create a shadow green color. I didn't need a different paint. I didn't need something unusual. It's just a matter of mixing the existing colors I have in my palette. Because I'm working in those complementary colors, I can mix anything I need. So small amount of red into the green, and boom, we've got the shadow at both ends. With the yellow infused, we've got the bright light in the middle. We are ready to rock and roll. Now, these are little minimal elements on all of my Retogers, but it ties them into the rest of the army, adds a little bit of visual interest. Normally, I say you should avoid trying to do a bright color in one singular place, but because of where this is around his head, I was still okay with placing it here, as I felt the red was so, so intense that it effectively balanced it out. Now, um, some other quick details. Uh, I, of course, get hit the eyes. That's just covering them with white, and then the fluorescent orange, and then a white dot. Again, I didn't film that because... It's just really hard to paint eyes on camera. I'm sorry. Um, but that means it's time for the metallics. So with the metallics, I start by laying down some Vallejo Metal Color Steel and then taking the silver and roughing it in. What I say when roughing it is I want the steel to have a little bit of beaten texture. But before I get to the silver, it's important to create my shadows. So I'm going to lay down the steel. Then I take some Tenebrous Gray from AK 3rd Gen. It's sort of a black purple I really like. And I create all of my shadows over the miniature. So that means uh, on the blades, uh, that means on any parts of the metal around the rivets, all of those things. Just laying that in again as a thin glaze. Then I take the silver, get it in my brush, but then I wipe most of it off. And by wiping most of it off, what I can actually do is a sort of almost a controlled dry brush in a given location. So you'll notice how I'm almost attacking it with a stippling, stabbing, scratchy motion. And I do that because one, it's going to simulate the texture of the metal. And two, because then it doesn't go on very strong and it lets me build it up quite naturally and transition. And that texture will also create more visual noise that serves to hide the blend between the metallic and the non-metallic of the shadow. So ideally we should be going from the glaze of the matte black up to the steel up to a little bit of the silver, up to a lot of the silver as I build it up. Now this whole time I'm also going to be focusing on things like the damage and the scratching. Wherever there's a cut into the metal, we're going to hit that with an edge highlight, and we're going to make sure there's black dropped in there so that it's nice and uh, dark in those. Same thing with all the edges, the separation lines between all the elements. Those also need to be nice and dark. Okay. With the steel basically in place and the transition done, it's time for a little weathering. Here we're going to grab our Pro Acryl Warm Brown, and I mix it in a couple different consistencies, dropping some glazes, dropping a little bit of more intense brown around the miniature in places where there would naturally be rust or damage. So that means around things like rivets, those are very common to gather water and hence rust, on the flat of the blade where it wouldn't be naturally cutting and chipping things, but also just where there's connection points, joints, and so on. Anywhere where liquid or wear will naturally manifest frequently, that's where the, the uh, metal will get more rough, where humidity, water, and uh, condensation will collect, and rust will form. Once that brown is in place, I then mix in a little of my fluorescent orange and start just dabbing it around inside. And I actually do a couple of different mixes. First, a little bit of the orange, and then a lot of the orange. Uh, and then finally I come back in with just the pure orange and I dot just a few of the rivets or the other things to show they are heavily and freshly rusted. So with that, my Retoger is ready to go. In fact, I've got two of them, two Retogers. So here's how they came out. I think they look pretty awesome. Uh, and uh, I am very excited to keep painting these guys. The third one is already on my desk uh, as I'm like recording this right now. These guys are so much fun to paint. Like, these new Rad Ogres are exceptionally good sculpts. And I am, um, honestly, I want to paint more of them. So, I really hope you enjoyed this. If you've got any questions about uh, how I did anything here, feel free to drop it down in the comments. I always answer every question and read every comment. If you want to support the channel, there's lots of ways you can do so. You can hit like, you can share this video, you can subscribe. We have new videos here every Saturday. They're not all about Skaven, though definitely a few in the coming months are going to be as I'm building this army. And I'm really excited about you coming along on this journey with me. Skaven has been my army for almost 30 years, so the chance to paint a brand new one has me super jazzed, and I hope you'll come along with me. If you've watched to this point, 
and I want you to also go over and check out John's channel if you don't already. Ninjon really is a great dude and a great friend. Uh, I mean, he's trying to come at the king, but he'll probably miss, and that's okay. He's still great anyways. Uh, so, thank you so much for watching this. I really appreciate it. Don't forget our Patreon down below. It's focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. We'd love to have you as part of the community. As always, though, I thank you for watching this one, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.